Michelle Dixie here. As many of you know, I'm heading back out to the PCT this summer to fill in the fire closure areas that I couldn't go through in 2017. And I have chosen a new sleep system to go out there with me while I do that. So today I wanna to tell y'all all about that. First things first, I have decided to try a quilt. I have heard about quilts for years and years, but I've always been afraid of being cold with a quilt. I tend to be a colder sleeper and knowing that I have something that could be kind of drafty kind of freaks me out. But since I'm gonna be hiking in the summer months, I decided that now would be a good time for me to just kind of try it out and see what I think because so many people ask me about my opinion of quilts, but until I try one, I don't have any personal experience to share with them. So I'm gonna give it a go. On the PCT and CDT, when I did my through hikes on those trails, I had a 10 degree z Packs sleeping bag that I really love and it's kind of hard for me to transition to something else that I have no idea how it's gonna go. I feel like when you swap up big three items, it can be a little scary, but I've heard great things about the company Enlightened Equipment and their sleeping bags and quilts. In fact, Perk on the, I believe the whole PCT and CDT had the same quilt from EE. I believe it was a 30 degree or 40 degree, I can't remember for sure, but he actually stayed warm in it the whole time. Again, I'm a cold sleeper. I think he's a warmer sleeper. Aaron, my friend and editor of this channel who was on the CDT, had an enlightened equipment quilt for part of his through hike of the CDT and liked it. So I felt comfortable going with EE because I know people who have used their quilts and did like them and did not freeze to death in their sleep. I decided to go with a 30 degree enlightened equipment Enigma. One thing that I like about enlightened equipment, whether it's the bags or quilts from what I could tell just shopping their website online, is that they have options for custom bags or quilts or they have stock options. For example, if you're gonna hit the trail and your sleeping bag or quilt just got torn up for some reason and you need something quickly, but you still want something that's pretty lightweight, then you can contact them, order one of their in-stock bags or quilts, and they'll ship in a day or two. Because I knew about this trip in advance and I had some time to work with, I ordered a custom quilt it takes about four to six weeks to get those, but you're allowed to select more things. That's why it's customized. So you can pick the color of the outside of your bag or quilt and the inside. You can pick like the denier of the nylon, so 10D, 20D. You can also choose the down fill power. You can either go with 850 or 950. If you go with an in-stock bag, you can of course still select the length, and the width of the bag that you need, but you don't get to choose your color or the fill power of the down. So I suggest doing that ahead of time. That way you can get exactly what you want. But if you're in a pinch, then there is the option for in-stock bags or quilts. I chose black on the outside, charcoal on the inside. I know I'm just so exciting with my color selection, but I like those colors because they won't show grime as much and they're both tendy on the outside and inside. I selected the 950 down fill power. I'm 5'8", so the regular length works for me and because I'm so scrawny, then I went with the slim width. As I mentioned before, I went with a 30 degree quilt because I figured the summer months would be a little bit warmer and that way I could have something a little more lightweight. The temperatures out west this spring, summer have been a little weird though. So I'm hoping that it's actually gonna warm up once we start hiking compared to what it has been. It's just been a little bit cooler, but either way, we'll work around it. It's not gonna be below 30 degrees at night where I'll be hiking, so I should at least survive. What helped me kind of transition to this quilt is it does have a sewn toe box and when I do get chilly at night, if I do, it's my feet that tend to get cold. So I like the idea of being able to trap in the heat from my feet in a sewn foot box area. I think what the fuss is all about with quilts is they tend to be more versatile. So if it is a warmer month or a cooler month, you can adjust for that. You can 
put your straps around your sleeping pad and really get snug up in there. Or you can release the straps if it's warmer and kind of hang a leg out so it's easier to regulate temperature. I hear that quilts are also better for tossing and turning. I tend to toss and turn. I go from being a stomach sleeper to a side sleeper and then over to my other side. So the idea is having the straps around the sleeping pad keeps the quilt in place and you're free to toss and turn. Because it straps around your sleeping pad, then you're free to kind of wiggle around in there. When you have a bag that zips up, a mummy bag especially, and you try to toss and turn, then it tends to turn with you. And because you're supposed to keep the zipper behind you to not allow air to draft in through that area, then you can end up getting colder because now the zipper is on your back and you have to kind of try to maneuver it around and in your little cocoon. So the quilt is supposedly better for that. I'll let y'all know what I think. Quilts are generally more lightweight than sleeping bags because they don't have a zipper. They have the opening with the straps. And because they go around your sleeping pad and you have the sleeping pad on your back, it's not necessary for the material to wrap all the way around you like a burrito, like it does in a sleeping bag. And in theory, it's not necessary to have that material all the way around you like a burrito because when you're sleeping on that part of your sleeping bag, whatever's underneath you, you're compressing that down. So it's really not supposedly giving you much insulation anyway. I know I'm kind of being skeptical and I don't mean to come across like that. It's just that these are the ideas and the perks of quilts that have been presented to me, but of course I haven't personally tried them yet. So again, that's why I wanna give the quilt a go this summer. If you were to get an EE Enigma or any other quilt for that matter, the options that you select will probably have some effect on the weight and the price of the quilt. The custom quilt I purchased is 15.35 ounces and costs $345. Notice I said purchased. Yes, I purchased this quilt myself. It is not a sponsorship. EE did not contact me and ask me to use this quilt. This is one that I selected on my own. If y'all have watched this channel for a while, then you'll know that I do not take gear for money, reviews, videos, etc. And for the next item in my new sleep system is my sleeping pad. I chose the new Thermarest Neo Air Uberlite. They have the small, regular, and large. I went with the small. I did that on the PCT and CDT with my Neo Air X-Lite. The short for me covers from my head to about my knees and then I put my pack up under the remaining part of my legs to help cushion and also insulate me from the ground. It's worth it to me to shave off those extra ounces because I carry more camera equipment and this summer we'll have my dog Fancy with me so I'll have some of her gear also. The weight of the small, regular, and large respectively is 6 ounces, 8.8 .8 ounces, and 12 ounces. The price ranges anywhere from $140 to $210 depending on whether you get the small, regular, or large. The R value of these pads is two, and that is the minimum R value requirement to be considered a three season sleeping pad. It is an inflatable sleeping pad. I cannot sleep on the closed cell foam pads. I, I just am not comfortable because my hip digs into the ground. Now I know a lot of folks with the Neo Air Extra Light said it sounded like a bag of Fritos when they slept on it. It was a louder mattress, but it was worth it to me to have a more noisy mattress for a more comfortable rest. So I'll let y'all know if the Uber Light seems as noisy or if it's less durable, you know, if it, it seems like it'll pop more easily. All right, y'all, that is a rundown on my new sleep system. If I didn't provide you the specs you were looking for on something or you want more information about either of these items, I'll put links to them in the video description so you can check them out. If y'all have any experience with either of these items or even if you've found like the perfect sleep system set up for you, please feel free to share all of that in the comments below because other people who are looking for sleep systems or looking to upgrade might like to hear some feedback on what works for other people. Thank y'all so much for watching and if you wanna follow along with my journey this summer, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you'll get notifications and we will see y'all next time.